Whenever you present an argument, your goal is to convince someone of something. What makes an argument convincing? Well, two things are required. First, all the premises must be true. Premise 1. Fido is a dog. Premise 2. All dogs are mammals. Conclusion. Therefore, Fido is a mammal. We can start with premise 2. Yes, that's true by the definitions of the words dog and mammal. Is it true that Fido is a dog? Well, maybe, maybe not. But if all parties can agree that the name Fido in this context refers to a particular individual creature that just happens to be a dog, then yes, premise 1 is also true. As this argument is constructed, that's enough. Both premises are true, and that means that logically the conclusion must also be true. It's impossible for Fido to not be a mammal if Fido is a dog, because all dogs are mammals. But is this always enough? No. Let's try this. Premise 1. Fido is a dog. Premise 2. All dogs are mammals. Conclusion. Therefore Fido is a car. Both premises are still true, assuming once again that the name Fido actually refers to a dog in this context. But obviously Fido is not a car. Both premises are true, but the conclusion isn't. This is possible because the logic, the form of the argument, is flawed. The conclusion doesn't follow from the premises. The argument is not valid. In order for an argument to work, it must be sound, meaning that all premises must be true, and it also has to be valid. Problems with the logic of an argument are called formal logical fallacies, and common fallacies have been given names so that it becomes easy to point them out. The fallacy in this argument is called non sequitur, which is Latin for does not follow. It's also known as the generic fallacy. Here's an example of a non sequitur from Winston Wu. When arguing that it's not irrational to believe in the paranormal, he said this, quote, People who hold paranormal or other non-empirical beliefs may simply be expressing a cultural, personal or spiritual view and nothing more. This does not mean that they are less intelligent, more irrational or childish than non-believers of the paranormal. In fact, these people are usually capable of applying rational and intelligent thought to a wide variety of everyday situations when it matters, and no doubt do this effectively and rationally. When we take the context into account, we can present his argument like this. Premise 1. A is usually intelligent and rational. Premise 2. A holds paranormal beliefs, possibly for irrational reasons. Conclusion. Therefore, it is rational to hold paranormal beliefs. The conclusion does not follow, because even a person who is usually rational can hold irrational beliefs, because the key word here is usually. Wu even draws attention to this by adding that these people apply rational thought to everyday situations. This can hardly include paranormal experiences. To make it worse, he explains that a paranormal belief can be held for cultural, personal or spiritual reasons, as opposed to rational reasons. Clearly the conclusion does not follow from the premises. The non sequitur is called the generic fallacy for a very good reason. All formal fallacies are actually special cases of non sequitur. Typically the term is used when a formal fallacy is spotted which doesn't have a name of its own. Next time we're going to have a look at an informal fallacy. Informal fallacies differ from formal ones in that they are not really problems with the logic of an argument, but are the result of missing false premises. Until then, stay logical.